The topic that I chose to present on was Brenda Milner and how she described patient HM who suffered from memory loss of hippocampal surgery in 1953. Background information on Brenda Milner is that she's a neuropsychologist from Manchester, England, who studied at the University of Cambridge where she received her bachelor's degree in experimental psychology in 1939. Later, Milner moved to Canada where she received her master's and her PhD at McGill University, also in experimental psychology. While still at McGill, Milner was contacted by Dr. William Scoville, a neurosurgeon at Hartford Hospital in Connecticut. He had just performed an experimental surgery on a patient named Henry Malazan. Commonly known as patient HM, Henry is one of the most studied patients in the history of neuroscience. As a child, he suffered from epilepsy. At first, his seizures were mild. However, by the age of 16, they got increasingly worse, and by 27, he could no longer work. In 1953, Henry was referred to Dr. Schofield and agreed to undergo an experimental medial temporal lobe resection. This involved removing parts of the hippocampus and amygdala from both sides of the brain. The surgery had cured Henry's epilepsy but had detrimental effects on his memory. After the surgery, Brenda Milner was invited to Hartford to study Henry's severe amnesia. She found that although he could remember his name, most of his childhood, and his family history, he could not remember events which occurred about 11 years prior to his surgery. In addition to this, he, had, he also had anterograde amnesia, meaning he could no longer take things from short-term memory and put them into long-term. He did, however, retain his short-term memory or his working memory. Milner explained that while she was studying Henry, he was very complicit and was always willing to participate in her experiments. His working memory was demonstrated when Milner would ask him to remember a number. Henry would manipulate or play with that number in the form of a calculation and then be able to recite the original number. However, a moment later he forgot he was even asked to recall a number in the first place. Henry was also able to complete mirror image tasks. He would be asked to draw a five-point star in a condition in which he could only see his hand and the star reflected in a mirror. He would then have to trace that reflection. He completed ten trials across three days and showed excellent skill retention. However, he had no recollection of ever having done the task before. This led to the understanding that Henry was able to improve on or learn new motor skills with repetition and practice without consciously realizing it. Before Milner's study of HM, we used theories provided by Carl Lashley to look at memory. The first being the theory of mass action, which said that memory requires mass action across large areas of the cortex. The second being the law of equipotentiality, which says that all areas of the cortex could sub for one another in terms of memory. As a result of Milner's studies, we know that memory is a distinct cerebral function, function which can be looked at apart from other perceptual and cognitive skills. In addition, she showed that there is a distinction between declarative and procedural knowledge. Also, that the medial portion of the temporal lobe plays a key role in memory. 